Hey guys, what is going on? And as promised, another Diablo 3 video. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering the Dagger of Darts Witch Doctor build. This build is insanely good AoE damage and super good single target damage all built into one. So primarily, a lot of people use this build to run speed greater risks, and it's also viable on higher greater risks for leveling gems. So let's get into the skills. On my left click, guys, I'm using Poison Dart Splinters. This ability is going to be your best DPS output, and since you're using Poison, you really only have two options here. Uh, you're going to have splinters for the DPS output, and then you could use Snake to the Face, however, I would say this one's more viable for the higher greater rifts, simply because you're proccing a stun and that would interrupt the Rift Guardian and any other nasty monster that might exist in the Rift. I'm going to right click guys, I'm using Acid Cloud, Acid Rain. This ability here is simply just used for the huge AoE radius coverage. You're going to drop this and it's going to proc the Zunis, giving your pets 275% more damage. This works really well with the right group setup because if you have a Sun Wuka monk and you have a Hill Pull monk, he's going to pull everything together in an area. <coughs> Wuka monk's going to proc the EP all over everything. Your darts are going to be shooting and piercing everything in the area, as you can see. It's it's amazing. It hits multiple multiple enemies. When this occurs, your darts are more or less going to shred the enemies and drop their health pretty low, every one of them for the most part. And then when the EP does actually trigger it's going to more or less guarantee a one-hit KO for every group of monsters you pull together. Fantastic, I would not pass that up. On my one key guys, I'm using Spirit Walk Honored Guest. I'm using Spirit Walk Honored Guest currently because my Hellfire Amulet has the Pierce Level passive. So, it's costing me a little more mana than usual to drop the Acid Cloud, but you could use a Hellfire Amulet with a Gruesome Feast passive and then switch this to Jaunt. Um, so far this is working okay for me right now, hasn't really given me any problems, so this is what I'm currently doing because of the passive on my Hellfire. On my two key guys, I'm using Soul Harvest Languish. This ability is great and made a huge difference. I would die from time to time as having some problems. Uh, I switched to this, and this gives you more damage, obviously because it boosts your intelligence, and it also gives you 30% armor increase, and it slows the movement speed of enemies that are harvested by 80% for 5 seconds. So, if something's chasing you or giving you a hard time and you're trying to catch up to your group, you could use it to slow enemies, um, but it's good for defensive and offensive capabilities. On my three key guys, I'm using Fetish Army Legion of Daggers. A lot of people like to use the Headhunters, which isn't a bad choice. Um, me personally, I like the Legion of Daggers. I know it is a physical skill, but the fetishes that shoot the darts still do the full damage from all the bonuses and whatnot from your gear. The thing that I like about Legion of Daggers is having the additional fetishes and it helps proc the cooldown on your Big Bad Voodoo more frequently. On my 4 key guys, I'm using the Big Bad Voodoo Slam Dance. Again, really hard to pass this up. It's a percent damage increase for your party and an attack speed boost for your party, including you. And it makes you do a lot more damage. Fantastic. So for passive guys, I'm using Spirit Vessel. This is pretty much a must if you're running higher greater rifts or even speed rifts. Usually they're pretty high up and this will help you uh, from dying and getting one shot <laughs> if it does occur so that's a good option for the second passive guys I'm using confidence ritual if you play this setup how it's supposed to be played you're going to be standing on the hill monk pretty much 100% of the time and while doing so you're in an inner sanctuary taking 50% less damage and typically I like to run with the experience EDPS barb and they use ignore pain which gives your party 50% more damage reduction so you're always going to be standing next to monsters is what I'm getting at. So this is always active and always being used. So it's just a nice solid 25% damage increase. Third passive guys is Fetish Sycophants. When you hit enemies with your spells, you have up to a 50% chance to summon a dagger wielding fetish to fight by your side for 60 seconds. More fetishes is always awesome for this build simply because your pets are doing a lot of damage. Even if they are not hitting stuff with the poison dart, they are still meleeing stuff and doing huge amount of increased damage because of all the procs from your skills and uh, items. Plus, you're getting faster cooldowns on your Big Bad Voodoo with this. Fourth passive guys is Swampland Attunement. This got an awesome revamp. <laughs> totally good. And again, you're going to be standing next to enemies at all times. So you're getting physical poison, fire, and cold resist for every enemy within 20 yards. And this is going to make you even more durable, which you pretty much need if you're going to be running with people and staying alive and doing damage is awesome. So, the items I'm using are currently the Dagger of Darts. There's two different options you could do here and I'm currently trying to work on it. However, this Dagger of Darts is really good, so it's working fine for now. Ideally, what people like to do is get an SMK Ancient, really high damage with attack speed on it. 
and they like to use the critical hit damage with the attack speed. They'll drop the 10% damage. Probably a little more damage output if you can get it, but use this if you cannot. This will give you decent damage and it'll get you on your way to doing what you need to do in groups. So I'm using the Zuni boots. Here I could roll the movement speed into armor, which would make me a little more durable. But again, that would be for pushing higher greater rifts. For speed greater rifting, you do want your movement speed to be capped. Um, it helps you keep up with your group. And the whole idea of speed greater rifting is usually to skip the elites and just kill trash and just move, move, move. You know, group, kill, group, kill, and just keep moving. So for now, movement speed is what I'm using. I'm using the Zuna Monster String of Skulls. If you can, obviously get an ancient weapon and offhand. Ideally, I wanted to get area damage on my additional stat here, um, but I went with the boosted intelligence and max fetish army damage for now because the intelligence rolled a thousand. Uh, not the best Zunamas is offhand, but I'm still working on that, and this is decent for now. So for rings, guys, I'm using focus and restraint. Again, here, you ideally want to get attack speed, crit chance, crit damage, max all of them if you can. But I have not done that myself. I haven't found that yet. So I'm using the Intelligence Crit Chance Crit Damage. Still really decent. For the Pants, you want the Intelligence Vitality, and you want the Poison Dart Damage Increase on the Pants. This actually does boost the damage of the Poison Darts for the Fetishes. Same thing for the Belt. You want Main Stat, Attack Speed, Crit Damage. Obviously go as high as you can, try to max it, and Poison Dart Damage on that. On the Zuni's Gloves, Again, you want main stat, attack speed, crit chance, crit damage. Attack speed is really good for your pet damage, so it doesn't work that way for every class, but it's super good for the pet damage, so you want to boost that as high as possible. Using the Og Hills shoulders and bracers, poison damage, main stat, vitality, crit chance. Notice on the secondary guys, you really, if you can, you want to try to get cold resist, physical resist, lightning resist, even arcane is okay, so I got physical here. So if you do that, you have a good mix of uh, of resistance and here you can see I have reduced range from range attacks as well which is pretty nice but you wouldn't want to try to get physical uh, physical is probably going to be the most important one physical arcane cold or lightning those are going to be some of the ones you want to try to get on your secondary resist if you don't have all resist on the gear for my shoulders these actually rolled really good for me I got lucky kind of I got vitality main stat armor fetish army damage and then the secondary resist of 210 arcane with pickup radius. Pickup radius is also really good, and that's simply because you have Swampland Attunement, and it says the range of this effect is increased by a golden pickup radius. So if you can get extra pickup radius, obviously take it. Like I said, gear's not perfect, but I'm working on it. There's my Hellfire, and then I'm using the Carnival Mask, and if you can get an ancient one of those, obviously on any of these, that's what you want. So you want to use the Star Metal Kukri and the Cube effect, the Mask of Jerem, pet still 100% increased damage, and then you want to use Ring of the Royal Grandeur. That way you can actually use the uh, Carnival to proc the fetishes shooting the darts. <coughs> and then you get 100% damage from Mask and 275% increased damage from Zunis. This is going to be the most DPS output you can get. You're also going to be proccing Focus and Restraint, which is 100% more damage. And then the gems you're going to be using is Simplicity of Strength. This one is honestly really good for this setup. The damage on this is huge for your Poison Dart fetishes. It does. It's probably one of your highest damage gems. Probably... I think if I remember reading correctly, this one actually gives your fetishes the most damage uh, out of any gem that you can use. And it also heals you for 2% of your max life when you hit an enemy with a primary. It's going to be... There's been so many situations where I've been shooting and just staying alive because I was shooting <laughs> and healing myself on top of the monk healing. So I'm using that. I'm using Bane of the Stricken. This one's really nice because you're going to be fighting Rift Guardians and trying to tear them down and the additional percent damage on each hit. And then Bane of the Trapped, again, you're going to be standing near stuff anyway, so you're going to be proccing that You're on your own, as well as your party proccing it for you, most likely. Uh, the ZDPS will have a slow of some sort. If you're doing speed greater rifts, you want to use the Experience Gem. If you're doing high-end pushing greater rifts, you want to use the Vitality Gem, most likely. All right, guys, I think I covered just about everything. Uh, Paragon, let's go over that one real quick. <laughs> Paragon, you want to max your move speed to what you can to get it maxed if you need it. Uh, intelligence boost that as high as possible. The most important thing for the offense is going to be crit damage, crit chance, and attack speed first, then cool down if you have extra points. Here I would say that you'd want to boost life percent, armor, and resist all. Depending on gear, you could select which one of those you want to boost first, but you definitely want to do those before life regeneration. And then area damage, resource cost reduction, life on hit, and then gold find last, since obviously in greater risk gold does not matter anyway.
Anyways, guys, hopefully I covered everything. If you guys have any questions and or comments, please let me know. I will be posting videos later of actual gameplay and how this works. And as always, thank you for taking time to watch my videos. I will see you guys next time. Thank you.